Good morning, grade 11. Today we're going to look through example 6.4 to see how we will report the transactions if we are using the periodic inventory system. If we look at the first transaction, paid check 324 to Beerman suppliers for stock 3,000 Rand and for stationery 560 Rand, what we need to do over here is put it in the cash payments journal as normal. <coughs> the only difference is that instead of having a trading stock column, I'm going to have a purchases column. So I put it in the purchases column instead of in trading stock. Remember the purchases is an expense account that we are recording the stock in at this stage. <coughs> Stationery will record exactly as normal. Number two, the goods were delivered to, um, to the business by Gavin's couriers and the amount of 200 Rand was charged to our account. Invoice 6407 was received and renumbered 90, number 90. In your creditors journal, you're going to do exactly the same thing as normal. You record it as you would have. But instead of putting it into the trading stock column that we would have previously, we are going to create a separate expense for carriage on purchases. And we'll show it there. Remember in the periodic inventory system, we would have had one trading stock column instead of purchases and carriage, and we would have put the delivery in trading stock, but now instead we're putting it in the carriage on purchases column. Number three, our cash sales are going to go into the cash receipts journal as normal. Now this is where the system actually gets quite nice. It's a lot simpler. You're going to put your 8,000 Rand in bank and in sales, but there's no cost of sales column. So you don't have to worry about calculating cost of sales. You don't have to record it. Later on, we don't even have to post it to the general ledger. Just a quick reminder, our analysis of the receipts column is assuming that we've actually received physical cash in hand. We would put it in the analysis of receipts column. And then when we take the money to the bank, we will then transfer it from analysis into the bank column. Number four, bought goods from Cheeto's shop and received invoice A267 for 4,500 Rand. Notice that I'm going back to my orange highlighter. This is why it's always a good idea to use the same colors as me because all my creditors journal entries I have highlighted in orange. So this one goes into the creditors journal as before and we put it into the purchases column that we are using instead of trading stock as we did before. Number five is in green. Issued a debit note number 20 to Gavin's couriers as they had forgotten to deduct our usual 10% discount as one of their regular customers. So we're going to put this into our creditor's allowances journal, which is showing that we owe the creditor less money. Notice I have decided to use a creditor's allowances account. You might like to make a little note for yourself that this is the other side of purchases or trading stock. It refers to your inventory. This is only the return of inventory that you will put into that column. Okay? Anyway, we are looking at the carriage, however, because the discount is going to be on the carriage, um, the delivery where the trade discount was left off. So my carriage on purchases is reduced by 20. Number six, in blue, for my debtors journal, goods sold to Enfonzani, 1,200 Rand, invoice 421 issued. So in my debtors journal, notice that it's got a lot simpler. I've only got one column because there's only one thing that I need to worry about. That is the selling price. Obviously, debtors will be debited. Sales will be credited. That's all I have to do. I'm not going to worry about my cost of sales. I'm not going to worry about my trading stock at all. Number seven, back to the pink. Three um, check issued to Alex Traders for 3,700 Rand for stock bought. This included a delivery charge of 250 Rand. I'm going to put it into my cash payments journal. The total amount is 3,700. So that goes into the bank column. I'm told that it included a delivery. Because I'm using the periodic inventory, I'm showing my carriage expense separately. So I will put my carriage of 
50 Rand over there, and then I work out the difference as the purchaser's figure. That represents the inventory that I bought. Number eight is in purple. Credit note 25 issued to N from Zani for goods returned, 100 Rand. Exactly the same as the dentist journal. The only difference is that instead of a sales column, I'm using a debtor's allowances column. In the same way as creditors' allowances is the other side of purchases, remember debtors' allowances is the other side of sales. So it's saying my sales is decreasing. Number nine in green again. Damaged stock was returned to Cheeto's shop. Credit note B372 for 700 Rand received. Notice that the credit note that I received is not the one that I'm going to use to record the transaction. It is simply a supporting document that I will use um, to back up the fact that I have issued a debit note in this case. It must be number 21. I'm going to show 700 Rand in my creditors' allowances column because it was, in fact, inventory that was returned. If it was anything else that was returned, if it was stationary or if it was a deduction of any other expense like we did for the carriage, it will not go into the creditors' allowances column. The creditors' allowances is only for returns of inventory. Number 10. Now, over here, I have used a pale blue, if you've got another color, to show the general journal transactions. This is just to illustrate where, um, in this case, Evalio, the owner, took goods worth 500 Rand for his own use. So, previously, we would have said debit drawings and credit trading stock. However, we don't have a trading stock account that we are using during the year, but my purchaser's expense needs to be smaller. And so I will credit my purchases with 500 Rand and I will write a narration or a story to explain what happened. The owner took goods for his own use. Number 11 is in the same color, it's also in the general journal. It's a very similar transaction, but in this case, instead of the owner taking goods, goods were donated. Goods that had originally cost 270 Rand were donated to the local children's home. Remember that both of these transactions. We want to show them at the cost price of the goods, not the selling price. We're showing them at cost price. In this case, I'm going to debit donations instead of drawings, but I will still credit purchases, just like I did above, number 10, because my purchases expense is getting smaller. And then I write a story to that effect. Do you have any questions on this example? Yes. How did they work out that it was 100 Rand that was returned? Um, going back, that was transaction number uh, five. Um, issued debit note to Gavin's couriers. They forgot to deduct. Look at number two. The amount was 200 Rand. So you will times it by 10% to get the 20. Thank you. Any, anything else? Yes. Are you not for that to be around the carriage on purpose? Because, again, going back to number two, it was a 200 rand charge for the goods being delivered to the business. So it was carriage on purchases in the first place, so therefore that's what I've got to reduce now for my discount. Okay. In this case, you've got to go back and have a look at what happened initially, because they didn't give it to you in the adjustment where it spoke about the discount. Okay. Anything else? Now I need to go and do those exercises, please. <laughs>